Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I'm Dino. You know, over the years, I have found that most people equate cost with quality. The more you spend, the better quality the product is. Well, I don't always buy into that philosophy. And a good case in point is this. This little backpacking stove and combination mess kit cost me less than $30 Canadian, and I think it's a good value. So today I want to show you why I bought this and why it's going to be part of my moto camping gear for this season. So why don't you sit back, grab yourself something cold to drink, and enjoy Dino's Tinker Shed. I'm really looking forward to trying this thing out. I'll see you after the break. Now years ago when my wife and I did a lot of backpacking and I was about, I don't know, 100 pounds lighter probably, I used to carry a Coleman Peak One white fuel stove. So it basically had a remote fuel bottle that you filled with white fuel, you pressurized it, and then you used some ignition paste to get the, the unit actually running. And it worked great. It was small, it was compact, it was reasonably lightweight. But I got rid of that stove a while ago. In fact, my friend Carl has it now and he's trying to get it working again. It needs new O-rings and a bunch of other stuff. Although white fuel is a great product, I found it to be a little bit, I don't know, messy in terms of having to carry it with the fuel bottles and all that. And I was always worried about it leaking in my backpack. So when I decided to start doing a little bit of moto camping this year, I got online and I went looking for a new style of a camping stove, basically. Now, the isobutane stoves that they sell today are really, really good, but you can spend upwards of $150 for some of the brand name stoves that are out there, and I just did not want to spend that much. On top of that, when I got rid of my backpacking stove, I actually got rid of my mess kit as well. So I needed to find it a complete solution. I found this particular stove on Amazon and it was under $30. I think it was $25. It came with the stove itself, a two-piece cook set, a cleaning cloth, and a folding spoon. Now, it seemed to be pretty cheap, like pretty inexpensive, and I was really questioning whether or not this stove would do what I wanted it to do. I did some research and did a bunch of reading in the comment sections and everybody that bought this stove said that it worked really well, it had lots of heat, it could simmer well, and honestly they've been running them for a couple years with very little problems at all. So I thought for under $30 it's worth taking that risk and trying out. Now when I first opened this thing up I was incredibly impressed. The quality of this thing was quite good actually. It's all stainless and aluminum and uh, the fit and finish on it was reasonably well. The only thing that I noticed was one of the little flip down feet needed me to just tap it with a hammer to tighten the rivet up a little bit. But other than that, it was really well built. The actual cookware, although not huge, was well made and the larger pot actually has graduations on it up to 800 milliliters and I think uh, 24 ounces maybe, something like that. They flip in and out so you can use the small pot as a lid to help boil. And the fact that it comes with its own cleaning cloth and even a stainless steel folding spoon that although sounded pretty gimmicky is actually quite robust, I thought for the price that you lay out for it, it was a good value. Simmer quality on this thing was really good and I always remember my Peak One was a little bit challenging to get it to simmer. This particular stove you could turn it down pretty low and it actually simmers like almost like a candle. And then when you turn it up, it is basically a rocket ship. It boils water in about two and a half minutes to boil that full 800 milliliters of water. So it's quite good. So anyway, I'm gonna put a chair on here and I'm gonna head over and pick my buddy Carl up. We're gonna take it out. We're gonna make a little lunch on the trail side today. So I'll be with you in just a second. I gotta get changed and 
get back out on the road. It's so nice, there's people everywhere. It's great, I love it when the neighborhood comes to life. Today, Carl, I got uh, something for us to take a look at here. It's the Odo Land Camping Cookware Set. This is a $25 complete cookware set. It comes with everything except the fuel bottle for this thing, and I wanted to test it out today, so I can't get better than this out in the woods. Oh, it's pretty good, I think. It certainly is a lot smaller than some of the uh, white fuel stoves we've had in the past. Should I make, put a full 800 milliliters in and see how it goes? Sure. Oh look, Dino, a surprise. A folding fork, amazing. Just wait four minutes, and it's back to the stars. Carl also brought along his Kelly Kettle. Now the Kelly Kettle dates back to the 1890s in Ireland, when a young Patrick Kelly, a small farmer and fisherman, developed his first kettle after a long winter of tinkering in the shed. Now it wasn't until the 70s when the actual kettle became more commercially available worldwide, and the Kelly family brought it from a cottage industry to a full-fledged, world-renowned kettle. Now, there's multiple different sizes of these, and I'll tell you, they're really handy if all you want to do is boil a little bit of water on the side of the trail. That's tasty. I mean, I don't know what the durability of that stove's gonna be, but if it lasts a year for 25 bucks, I mean, it packs down really small, the thing's got tons of power. I don't know. And from what I've read, guys have gotten three, four, five years out of these things really? with it with zero problems. Yeah, they they seem to be really well made. Self igniter. I'd buy it again. All right. What are my final thoughts on this little backpacking stove and mess kit? Well, I think it is a good value. Now, when I bought this, I don't know, two months ago or so. I think I paid $25 for the whole kit. I see now on Amazon that it's 
$35. It's actually gone up $10. However, even at that price, I do think it's a good value when you compare it to some of the brand name products. Now the build quality is good. It may not be as good as say a Jetboil or an MRS or MSR or whatever it is, but I think it's good enough for what I certainly want it to do. It's built every bit as good as my uh, Coleman Peak One Apex was 10 or 20 years ago. Um, and it seems durable enough to last multiple seasons of use. I really do think it's pretty good. In terms of fuel, um, I've never had an isobutane fuel stove like this before. Like I say, I've always had white fuel stoves. I think it's going to work pretty good and I'm not too concerned about um, locating the bottles for extra fuel. I, I'll carry two with me. When one gets low, I'll switch it out and then the next time I stop for resupply, I can just grab another bottle. It's not that hard. Now there is of course the environmental question because it has a um, disposable canister but most campgrounds do have a spot to place these in an orange bin so that they're recycled properly uh, the white fuel you know came in a metal container every time I ever bought it so it's sort of six and one half dozen the pots themselves now they're a little bit small I think I would prefer to have a 1.2 liter pot something like that where you can maybe boil a bit of pasta in there without too much problems but certainly heating water up for things like hot drinks, um, dehydrated meals from say Mountain House or something like that, um, things like that, it's pretty good. I definitely will have to carry a frying pan of some type with me or a larger pot that I can use to saute in for some other meals that I like to make. But you know, I had to do that with my Peak One as well. It didn't even come with any kind of mess kit. This is kind of nice. So overall, I think they're pretty good. The handles did melt a little bit on this, and I think that's because of uh, how small they are. They, basically, the flames from that, from that stove come all the way up the sides and can impact those handles, and it can burn you if you're not careful. But I think you can adjust that quite easily enough with the flame control. And speaking of flame control, this thing will simmer right down nice and low, which is great if you are cooking something like rice. You can let it bubble away there. You don't have to worry about it overpowering the meal itself. So I do like that. Now, would I buy this again? I would say yes. I think it's a good value. Now, obviously, I've only just bought it. Over the course of the season, I'll learn more about how the thing works. But initial thoughts, I would say, yeah, it looks pretty good and it seems to do exactly what it says. And I think it's a value budget item that allows you to spend a little bit more money on other things on your motorcycle. So yeah, I think I would buy it. All right. Well, that's my review for today. I hope you really enjoyed it. I certainly had a lot of fun out there cooking some ramen noodles with Garl. And if you did like it, leave a comment. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you like the stove or if you have the stove and let other people know what your thoughts are about it as well. Until then, I got a few other things that I have to do, so I'm gonna get working away, but I do hope to see you soon here on Dino's Tinker Shed. You have yourself a great day. Bye now. Comparatively, I got a little bit of salt. The fork is friggin' hilarious though. Yeah, genius.